here's the little guys that are going to be enjoying the fruits of my labor uh, for this piglet pen. There's a total of eight. Thought there was gonna be nine. And, but I guess the farmer, the guy that I got these from, which is the same guy that I got the last, I guess, three batches total of pigs from, said he lost one along the way. And the way I buy my piglets is, I basically reserve the whole litter. I, when these guys were five days old, I, back in March, uh, I committed to purchase them. There's a fairly large demand for feeder pigs in my area. And I find that if I just go ahead and commit to buying the entire litter, it saves that farmer from having to, you know, try to piece them out to the one or two homesteader, big homesteaders, uh, you know, on Facebook. And, you know, it takes a lot of time working that. And I get a little bit better deal and that way and build a little bit of a relationship. So these guys now have to be, uh, I guess, in process to Watts Way Farms. They're all going to get a color-coded tag and a couple shots and, uh, and then move into their new home. So let's get started. I think we're ready to begin the piglet in processing. So all of these pigs are going to get a color coordinated ear tag, obviously blue for boy, pink for girl. And though there's only eight total, statistically speaking, I should have half boys and half girls, not knowing. So we're prepared if in the very unlikely event, they all turn out to be the same sex. We've got them uh, ready to go. Got earplugs in case the squealing gets really loud. We're using, they're getting two different shots today. They're getting this, an ivermectin and the safeguard. Um, the ivermectin's in this doser that we got. We bought a slap shot, but since I'm gonna be holding them while Mrs. Watts uh, ministers, that I don't think we're gonna need the slap shot. And then we've got the individuals for the safeguard. And this is what the, the farmer we bought them for him recommended we do it. And this is what he did on the, the last batch. He did it before we got them. I just wanted to do it ourselves this time. And I guess the the thought is just bring them under the farm. This is the best way to do it. Now we're also going to weigh them. Uh, I've got the scale set up here. And so the plan is I'm gonna grab a pig. I'm gonna get on the scale. Mrs. Watts is going to record the weight and the sex and then ear tag it, shoot it twice, and then I'm gonna go ahead and close the gate and then we're gonna just drop it on in the pin. Let's see how it works.
Darren there in processing, you would have thought they were being stuck with knives, but the second we set them down, they were all fine, like nothing uh, happened. So I guess you can throw statistics out the window with my hope of, or I guess not a hope, just my thought that it was gonna be half boys, half girls. What we ended up with was only one pink tag, that little girl right there, and all of the rest are castrated boys. Um, the two shots, one of them was because they had, the farmer I got them from, it said that when he castrated them at two weeks old, he had noticed a little bit of lice and he treated them then. And I still saw a little bit when I was, um, when we were in onboarding them and so hopefully that uh treatment will help as you can see they're learning the hot fence um and i think that my bulk feeder here a little ambitious of me to think that they're going to be able to lift that up yet so what i'm probably going to do is i'm going to move that where half of it is the side it open anyway is underneath this tarp right here so maybe it helps stay it dry and i'm gonna put a bungee cord around it just so it stays open and uh get them on some feed but we weighed them off you heard me uh, heard me calling out the weight so that was the weight with me in it we subtract my weight and these all ranged well not counting the runt they're all in the 20 pound range we have one at 18 the little runt i think is that one right there was only 12 pounds. The biggest one, number B5, and it's the B is for blue, so blue tag number five was 30 pounds. So they're already rooting up. I bet you in the two weeks they're gonna be in here, they will have this good and tilled up for me in that period of time. So the farmer I got these from withheld food from them last night and then threw food in a the cage or the basically a big dog crate. Um, so obviously they're quite hungry and they're on their free choice ration now uh, that they're going to basically spend their entire lives on the farm getting so I propped up the one side and dumped most of that food into that side. And there's a little bit that fell on the other side. I'm hoping that very quickly they will learn how that thing works so that I don't have to uh, worry as much about the food getting wet and going to waste because food is getting expensive. It's up to $10, a uh, 50 pound bag, so 800 pounds a ton. And also went ahead and took this rubber bowl and added water to it. I think these pigs were used to drinking out of a pig nipple, but I'm not 100% sure. And as those of you that know my videos, we take pig, or the, not just the pigs, but all the animals, making sure that they are comfortable and healthy and happy and stress-free very seriously. So. I'm gonna keep this water bowl down here. I may have to change it out a couple times a day because I suspect once they discover it, they're going to want to play in it. But once I see them drinking out of the nipples, at least one of them drinking out of the nipples, I'll remove that water. 
But I also wanted to show you, I mean, look at, I don't know how well it shows up on this video, but they have already, they've been in here an hour. And look what they have done to mulch this up. Uh, obviously they were quite hungry, so they're going to town on it. And as you can see, the pecking order continues in, in here, but they'll get free choice uh, feed. So this will probably be the only time they have to really struggle and fight for pecky, pecking order after they get their bellies full this time from then on out it'll be whenever they get hungry there'll be food in there for them i'm hoping that'll help the little runt catch up uh in size with some of the other ones as well i opened this video with some interesting information i found out about hall greens when i was trying to find something to help hold this these panels together and I talked about how no pig here at Watsoi Farms will ever have a hog ring put in because candidly I love watching them root I think root and digging is what pigs do and part of our I guess mission or mantra, I'm not exactly sure what you would call it here at Wattsway Farms, is we're going to strive and do everything we can to make sure that all the animals we raise here in our, I mean, our cattle, our pigs, we hope to add chickens and rabbits and goats uh, and really turn this into a full functioning farm. And every animal on our farm is going to be raised with the, with us striving for creating not just healthy animals but happy animals and let them do what they do naturally and live you know their time in a as stress-free of an environment as possible I mean, we recognize the fact that these animals ultimate destiny is what we affectionately call a freezer camp uh, except for you know the select few that will be selected for breeding but even though even them when their breeding days are done they're headed to freezer camp as well i mean that's what we do believe god put animals on this earth for was to feed and clothe man and we celebrate that and enjoy it and believe that we can create these happy healthy pigs in a stress-free environment and kind of honor uh, the life of these animals in you know just everything that we do so i wanted to share kind of close this video out and share a few little details as we sit here and enjoy watching these pigs eat and root um with a, a few little facts on why i believe everybody should purchase from local farmers and not the Walmarts and grocery store chain, big block type stores. So this pen, and I mean, you can kind of, you know, you've seen the whole thing, is 16 by 32 feet. Well, not quite 16 because, you know, the overlap of the one square, but we're going to call it basically 16 feet by 32 feet. So it's 512 square feet. I found an article online and I'll share the link to it here in the show in the video description they talked about CAFO operation for pigs and for those who don't know CAFO I think stands for concentrated animal feed operation or something I don't know exactly but basically CAFO is the acronym for concentrated for when you grow large number of animals in very small spaces. And that's how most of your, your pigs and your chickens and whatnot are grown when they make it to the, you know, it's how they're grown out before they make it to these big block stores. So I'm gonna read you a quote and, you know, and I don't wanna belittle or belabor or beat up on anybody who does what they have to do to, feed their family but this article was about interviewing basically a guy who got into CAFO pig operations his farm is I think was about 30 acres so half the size of mine but he was raising thousands of pigs and as the quote was the pigs are segregated into groups of about 65 in pens within the barn that are 20 feet by 22 feet 
So that's 440 square feet. So what he was saying was that in a size, a space smaller than where these pigs are gonna spend the two weeks max, he raises 65 pigs for their entire life. That just blows me away. I cannot imagine that many pigs in such a small space. And he was, you know, quite proud and happy that he was providing, you know, a constant 65 degrees, I think it said, fresh circulated air, concrete floors where all the waste fell through, you know, controlled lighting. He said that his pigs were happy and they had everything they needed. And, you know, again, I'm not, don't know the guy, I just read the article, but I'm just gonna have to disagree. I just think this, is what a happy pig is. It's a pig that has basically all of the steroid-free, antibiotic-free, uh, you know, locally milled uh, feed that it can eat. It gets constant access to fresh pasture with rooting and grubs and bugs and everything else to make them happy all the fresh water he can drink, and then, and we rotate that. I actually feel a little guilty that I'm gonna have to leave these guys in here for two weeks. I honestly think a few days, and they'll be ready for pasture, but between the tornado or whatever it was that tore off the top part of my barn yesterday, uh, the, other, the other pigs have gotta to get to pasture, get to the processor. Uh, it's a three hour drive one way here on Wednesday and I've got to go out of town for work and just everything else. I just, they're going to be in here for two weeks. There's just no way around it. But as soon as they're done here, they're moving this direction into the woods. And, and what I do is, and I don't know, I'm going to do the math and figure out, but for the, the, the current batch that are at processing size now, I made sure that every paddock they got was right at three quarters of an acre. That's 32,670 square feet. So you divide that by 20 pigs and my pigs individually were getting 1,634 square feet of fresh space each every couple of weeks. I mean, that's almost four times the size of what this these CAFOs are raising 65 pigs in. So my individual pigs get more space, three times the space of what 65 pigs get in the CAFOs. And, and I rotate them every couple of weeks as soon as they beat up the ground enough and I'm able to, they get fresh pasture. So they don't, they don't, you know, my, that, that first batch did not, other than the last couple of days before they hit to the processor, they don't see the same pasture twice. I do move them back into where they started um, and to make it easier because that's where my trailer sits and it's easier to load. Um, and so that's it. But other than that, they see fresh ground every time. So they get all that they want to do um, to be pigs. And I just believe, I think it was Joe Salatin, when he's bringing out the pigginess of pigs. Um, and I just like that phrase and that's what I'm gonna do. So I encourage all of y'all to consider that as you're, you know, see the ads on your local Facebook page or your Craigslist about the local farmers um, selling their pigs because, you know, I did sell the, the first 10 out of the 20. I've got eight that'll be ready, more that I need to sell in July. And these guys in about seven more months will be ready for the processor as well. And I can tell you, there's no way I will ever be able to sell at a price that competes with what you can go buy pork for at Walmart. And and I can tell you, this is a far superior product. I mean, it's like com comparing, you know, I guess a, a Cadillac to a Yugo, that old car that y'all remember, I'm kind of dating myself from way back when. Um, in quality, but more so than that, I had a customer use the word conscientious carnivores, and I really like that. I mean, I, I believe, you know, as humans and kind of masters of the earth and all that are on it, that we should, you know, take a little bit extra steps um, to, you know, to ensure that we're doing, I guess, things right. And, you know, and candidly, I couldn't compete. I mean, I, I mean, honestly, 
that the price I charged for the first batch of pigs with the two increases of pig feed, I'm breaking even at best on the first 10, most likely losing a little bit of money when you count the stuff that I kind of don't separate out as an input cost, like the diesel in my truck to go drive the hour to get two tons of feed every two weeks, the, the half a tank of gas each direction it takes to drag the pigs to the processor and my time i mean i have nothing for my time i mean i still have a daytime job so i don't um kind of consider me having to get paid i don't draw any sort of paycheck out of this farm yet so we do it for the sheer enjoyment but the reality is i am going to have to go up on this next batch of pigs that i'm going to try to sell here in a couple of weeks um because pig feed's gone up twice since december i'm paying a, almost 200 dollars a ton more than I was in December 28th. And, um, you know, and it's just, you know, you're going through a ton of week, so you've got to, you've got to price accordingly. So I just encourage everybody to think, think of that the next time you're at Walmart looking for pork or beef or chicken or any meat, and maybe not do that. Go on Facebook, go on your local buy, sell, trade pages, and put a post out there and says, hey, you know, in search of. And whether you want pork, beef, chicken, I promise you, you'll be satisfied with the results and uh, you'll be happy that you did. And candidly, that's exactly what led to where we're at today with, um, with these, you know, these animals that we now grow. That's how exactly how it all started. It was Oh, I guess several years ago now, but it was an ad on Facebook for a local farmer that was selling steers and they weren't completely grass fed. I think they were grass fed, grain finished, but, um, you know, I just kind of started thinking about that and the life of a cow and one of the big feed lots versus on a farm. And I bought that uh, beef from him. Now, I've since only do grass fed. I do think grass fed is a, even a better quality. But from that point on, I quit buying uh, meat at stores. And my goal, and we deal, still do from time to time. I don't have any chickens. I don't have a source for it yet. Uh, but I'm going to start. And so we do still buy, you know, a little bit. But my goal is that 100% of the meat that my family consumes is going to be either raised here on my farm, which would be ideal, or sourced from a local farmer like myself. So I quit, I guess, pontificating, and I just wanted to kind of share that. That's near and dear to me. Uh, I hope that maybe out of everybody that sees this, if just one of you, you know, uh, it kind of strikes a chord and changes the way you look at what you feed your family, then it's worth it. If by all means, if you're here local in the Troy, Alabama range and are in the market and like to consider uh, some locally raised, humanely grown pork, beef, uh, please reach out to me. If you're not in my area and just don't know how to find that local farmer, please put a comment in the description, give me your email address, send me a note. I will happily do the work to help hook you up with a local farmer. I promise you there's one in your area. So with that, that's all for this video. Thanks for, you know, following along. And as we built this uh, cage or this pen and got these new uh, pigs on the farm, I look forward to the upcoming weeks of videos as we watch these guys grow, live, and prosper on a farm. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please consider subscribing, thumbs up, notification, and all that good jazz. Uh, leave me some comments. I look forward to hearing from y'all. Talk to you soon. See ya.